Liverpool exits the Europa League at the quarterfinal stage at the hands of Atalanta. 3-1 on aggregate. And listen, you know, credit to Atalanta. First and foremost, they were exceptional across both legs, um, particularly at Anfield, where the damage was well and truly done. And Liverpool gave themselves a mountain to climb. Um, and it was a mountain that proved far too steep. And we're going to discuss how Liverpool failed to reach the top of that mountain. To be honest with you, it failed to even make any headway into it other than the first maybe 20 minutes um, or so. Um, yeah, before we do sort of delve into the game, generally speaking, Chloe, we're going to just chat around it about Liverpool's week, I guess, because it's been a bleak week. Um, and I know how much that rhymes, um, but it has been properly, properly awful. And it's been a recurring theme, really, across all the games of late that for whatever reason, we, it is just all a little bit pedestrian there's a lack of urgency it feels a lot of the time and we sort of take the second half in isolation today because the first half I thought was okay for large parts to be honest with you and you go in at half time obviously one nil down and you think okay you never know replicate that a little bit more look a bit more clinical in front of the goal which is something we'll talk about in more detail most definitely and who knows what can happen but we never even built up ahead of steam it was a bit of a non-event really the second half and that's we could say that about a lot of Liverpool performances recently I mean what do you put that down to because we've just spoke off camera there about like like, it almost looked as though if you didn't know the scoreline in that game today, you'd think, oh, Liverpool are cruising through to the semi finals here. But that was never the case. How can you explain that? The, the only way I can explain it is this looks like a team that just needs the season to be over. Like, it just looks like this is a step too far that they don't have it in the tank, to be honest. Mm. It's like they've ran out of energy, ran out of, I don't want to say desire or motivation, but that second half, it, it was like, like they that. just weren't up for it. Yeah. It was like they, they didn't think they could win. They couldn't be bothered putting in the hard yards. Um, yeah, it does look like a team that, that needs the... Um, the end of the season to come rather quickly. They've just run out of gas, haven't they? And it's mad because, like, Liverpool... The, Crystal Palace, the first half, was shocking. The second half gave you a bit of hope. Mm. Liverpool just couldn't find the back of the net for some reason. And then it was, like, the re- reverse. Like, the first 25 minutes, tactically, I thought we were doing it. I thought the Diaz and Salah being in those 10 positions was really good. What, mm. I, what I didn't like was that we weren't moving Atalanta from side to side enough because the likes of Sobo, there was no one on that right hand wing. We yeah. needed some whiff to make sure that we were moving them. And the more that second half went on, the less Liverpool became, you know, with the first 20 minutes, I thought we were all over them. But I don't think we were in full control. It was very much an end-to-end game of football where Liverpool had loads of possession, but they were losing the ball in really dangerous areas mm-hmm. with sloppy passes. Um, but going in at 1-0 one, one at half-time, you thought, yeah, take that. And you thought Liverpool had come out all guns blazing, you know, first 10 minutes, let's really get at them. And I don't know what the hell I was watching, but Liverpool just decided to kick a ball amongst the back four. <laughs> it just never came, did it? Right? It felt like at some point, listen, the second half was all a little bit disjointed. It was all a little bit flat, a little bit static, as you mentioned, yeah. just quite happy keeping the ball at the back and trying to wait for that opening that was never coming. And again, you've got a credit for Atalanta to, to the way they defended. They were resolute. They were really intelligent. They were really rigid in the way they went about the business. The man-to-man marking stuff worked really well. The Liverpool tried and I think were quite successful in negating that in the first half as you mentioned but second half it, it never even looked like turning into a, a potential for Liverpool to overturn that deficit to be honest with you and a lot of that is due to as I mentioned the lack of urgency that we seem to possess but we didn't win many of our battles across the pitch as well and when you go up against a team like that you have to and yeah. we simply weren't we came out on the second best on all too many of them but I think for me as well like we mentioned it there they did look tired and they like a team or a group really collective that needed the season to end because they didn't have the energy they've been to the well a lot this season there's been certain games where we've left it late and we've sort of we've hailed the the resolute nature of this Liverpool side and the ability to go so deep into games and to find a way to win maybe we've done that one too many times I'm not quite sure but the fact that our brand if you like is heavy metal football and so much of what we do well is based on the intensity and all that sort of we'll run further than you we'll run through a brick wall mm-hmm. and you won't etc etc when you come up against a side who's willing to do similar I guess and also when we are running on fumes a little bit it looks like right now I guess you fall short and that to me just boils down to you need to find another way Yeah. and Liverpool across these two legs now they've not been able to turn to any other way of going about the business no and it, it, it's mad because like you mentioned there we are named for a team to to really 
give everything and and um, I'd like I, we didn't even throw our centre halves up at any point like no. it was like it's like no Liverpool just like yeah, yeah lads it's it's tie over that um, and usually we don't throw in a towel do we we fight for absolutely everything yeah. Um, I, yeah it was just it was a very very strange game um, I mean. All over the park in that second half. We it felt like they had twenty two lads on the pitch. Mm. It felt like they were suffocating us. Yeah. Every time we actually got out of our own third, there was Curtis Jones surrounded by four players. Mm. It was Cody Gakpo surrounded by four players. Diego Jota, Darwin Nunes were nowhere to be found. Mo Salah was nowhere to be found in that second half. Um Liverpool can't find a way. They didn't have a plan B. And it's mad because the tactics were working for us for 30 minutes of that that first half. And you see them instantly adapt in that second half. The higher up Mm -hmm. in the first half, they let Trent have the ball a bit. And what they learnt was, we can't do that Mm -hmm. actually. Um, And in the second half, it was like, no, no, we'll go back to you letting Ibu Kanate have that ball and Virgil van Dijk on his left foot. Good luck, lads. Mm. Um, And that's what they did. And Liverpool and Jürgen Klopp had no answer for it. And it was like, it was like we just weren't even asked. Like it was, like I'm screaming at us to stop passing. We've got to take risks at some point. Like you were just thinking, lads, you've you've just got to start taking on your man now. Like Alexis McAllister, swivel and take on your man. Curtis Jones, swivel. Our midfield, you have to, it's so disjointed. One of you have got to come deep, pick up the ball and take a risk because you might as well concede another goal trying to get a a second. Um, And instead it just seemed like Liverpool were just far too happy passing it around the back forward Uh, and keeping possession. And that's exactly, you are absolutely spot on and that's it because even Klopp in his pre-match press has said something along the lines of, and paraphrasing ever so slightly, would go out in sort of a beautiful fashion. That wasn't that. Mm. that. That was, we went out and it was a bit of a whimper, a bit of a damn squib. Certainly the second half, as I mentioned earlier, just a non-event really. And that that's so un-Liverpool-like. It it's was untrue. like... It was like a dead rubber last season where yeah. you can't get top four, you're not going to go down, so it's just a bit, mm. no one got injured. I, it was just mad. It's not as if Atalanta, again, incredible. Fair play to them. Hats off. Outplayed us across the two legs. Chapeau. Amazing. Yeah, However, it's not as if we're playing against peak Real Madrid or Manchester City now and you think you've got this three goal deficit to try and overturn even in those circumstances by the way if you only were chasing two goals for 45 minutes you'd expect Liverpool to throw the kitchen yeah. sink at it that never came tonight and that's why I can't quite that is, square that, yeah. off in my mind I can't quite come to terms with the fact that I've watched us you know have a decent amount of possession probably the lion's share possession but never really lay a glove on Atalanta I mean Good side. I think they're sick in Serie A. But come on, like, this is Liverpool. This is Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool. Yeah. This is Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool in the final throes of Jurgen Klopp's time at Liverpool. We expect them to go out there and leave absolutely everything on the pitch and leave no stone left unturned no. in about going and trying to find a way I, to win. Never happened. No, and it, like, it wasn't like, I mean, we made the subs. We had two shots, by the way, in that second half. That tells you everything that you need to know about Liverpool's desire to go and try and win them. that game. Yeah. I think I think Atalanta had about seven. Yeah. Um, um, and it felt very much like that. And the subs happened. And I mean, I I wanted Lewis Diaz to stay on the pitch, that was for sure. But the subs came on. I'd be surprised if, if they had more than three touches each because... Mm. I, I, I don't know there was just and it's also not their fault because our lads are passing it around the back and, and there's no one helping us out there's, it's a little bit disjointed but like the only one who was like okay well I'll go and find the ball is Harvey Elliott and Harvey Elliott decided to run he was making diagonal runs he was trying to come short he was trying to influence the game mm. but ultimately every other lad around him was just far too you know interested in, in saving their energy yeah. Um, and yeah like, it's just mad like you just felt with 15 I said my my warning point is 20 and that's where you go all out yeah. and at no stage not even with a minute left not even, like we put Jaden Dan's on and I'm thinking oh okay so maybe now we'll go for it like yeah. And it was like you might as well have just left him on the bench because you didn't use him. You didn't. You didn't say, right, lads, let's try and get some set pieces or let's pass it to McAllister. Let's get McAllister out wide. Let's put Curtis Jones a bit deeper mm. and let's just start whipping balls in. Let's get Jane Dans in the box. Let's get Darwin Nunes, Diego Jota. Let's get um, Virgil Van Dijk up and let's just try start whipping things in the box. 
in Liverpool ran out of ideas, but it wasn't even like they were looking for ideas no. at the same time. That, that's my biggest thing with it as well. And I get the running out of ideas thing and that looked clearly evident, but I'm not sure we fought that much either. You know? no. I'm not sure we really racked our brains to think, okay, what can we do? Or how can we solve this particular puzzle? And that's what's most concerning for me. Like I said earlier, it was very un-Liverpool-like and a really sort of disappointing way in which to bow out of Europe because not befitting of a Liverpool side that we've watched in recent years, certainly not befitting a Liverpool side under Jurgen yeah. Klopp. It felt like if we were going to go down, go down swinging. I said it this week on the pod, the opposite. It's it's mad. You give yourself the hope. You get you get the goal. You get a bit of luck. I mean, it's a pen, but you you slot it away. Mm. Salah has a chance. He should make it two nil. Let's be honest. But like one nil half time, you've kept a clean sheet. Uh, that dressing room should be ER lads. We've got a goal. Mm. First ten minutes, let's really run at them. Yeah. You know, let's let's put them under pressure. See if we can get a quick early goal. But if we can't, we know at seventy subs are coming on. We're gonna have to give everything. We're gonna have to start putting Virgil up. We're gonna have to get the ball out wide um, and start whipping it in. And I, I just don't I just don't know how to explain it. It was like Liverpool just didn't want to no. win the game of football. Like it, they just had nothing in them no very hard very very hard very hard to explain um, but as you said a moment ago I was I was the same I had certain times times in my head that okay this must be the day the time yeah. that, I thought that we're going to go then that came and went yeah. then the next one came and went the next one came and went and all of a sudden you're like okay we're actually not going to throw caution to the wind there and try and win this yeah proper proper disappointing 